The Mudland Fortress saw two major battles in the 20th century, one in the First World War and the other in the Second. In this video, we're going to talk about the Siege of Novodrzejsk, that was the name of what is now the Mudland Fortress. It took place in 1915, where the Germans tried to take the fortress from the Russians. Have you ever heard of this battle? Well, I don't think so, so let's dive into it now. Hey, good to have you back on the channel, and if you're new, my name is Dave and I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I'm hustling history for you on location. And if you like that, well, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, so you will become part of the hustle. Let's start. I'm here at the Modlin Fortress, which is located north of the Polish capital of Warsaw. The fortress was originally built by the French in the early 19th century, but later came under control of the Russian Empire. And thus, this fortress was manned by Russian troops during the First World War. So, what happened? When the First World War broke out, the Germans had a plan to conquer France. And this was called the Van Schlieffen Plan. By making a circular movement through Belgium, they would have flanked the French and just achieve victory. And after this, they could focus their forces on the Russian Empire. Thing was, the Germans thought that the Russians would take three weeks to fully mobilize. However, this happened much quicker and the Russians invaded East Prussia and advanced deep into it. But they were stopped at the Battle of Tannenberg and later defeated at the Missourian Lakes. The Russians did achieve victory in Galicia and routed the Austro-Hungarians. In 1915, the Germans launched the Gorlis Tarnov Offensive and achieved a massive breakthrough. This led to the Russian Great Retreat, where the Russians abandoned occupied Poland. And thus, the Germans could move forward. However, the Russians did held on to the fortress of Novodrzejsk. They weren't willing to give it up yet. With Poland being abandoned, he, Russian General Mikhail Alexeyev, now had to make a decision about the last major fortress, Novodrzejsk. Lying to the north of Warsaw, where the Narev meets the Vistula, the fortress was on the site of an original fortification built by the Swedes in the 17th century and then rebuilt by Napoleon. In 1832, it was extensively modernized, but by 1883, was once more obsolete. Novodrzejsk was a large depot with a huge quantity of artillery rounds stockpiled within its walls. Alexeyev wanted the fortress to be held in order to slow or even stop the German advance through Poland. A total Russian force of around 90,000 men because some units had already suffered losses and divisions were made up of all the reservists, an estimated 55,000 were combat ready. The garrison commander was Nikolai Pavlovich Babier. The Germans were led by Commander Hans von Besseler, who had also command during the Siege of Antwerp in Belgium the previous year. He used a artillery train and heavy howitzers as well as mortars, and thus he opened fire. He directed his fire at the smaller sections of the fortifications since he had limited ammunition. Luck was on the German side because on the north side of the fortress a German reconnaissance patrol stumbled upon a Russian unit. They quickly ambushed them and captured them and find out that among these Russian soldiers there was a high ranking officer, a colonel. Now this colonel, he had a map, a total layout of the entire Novodrzejsk fortress with also the weaker spots marked and this was a gift from heaven for the Germans since their intelligence on the fortress was fairly poor. The Germans learned that Fort 15 and 16 were the weakest ones and thus they aimed their fire at these sections. As they advanced they witnessed trenches full of dead Russian soldiers and the rest of the Russians had already retreated and the remaining Russian troops they put up a stiff defense and inflicting heavy casualties on the Germans. Nevertheless, the Germans pushed forward and they kept firing on the Russian structures and soon overrun one part after the other. The most of the Russians either abandoned their post or surrendered. One major disadvantage was that the Russians lacked communication between their posts and also Russian commanders refused to take initiative. 
Whilst many Russian units had shown a similar lack of improvisation throughout the war, the lowly status of most of the reservist formations in the garrison ensured that their officers were particularly poor quality, resulting in these units frequently performing badly, thus damaging their reputation still further. General Babir realized that he wasn't able to hold out much longer and thus he ordered the destruction of the ammunition depot. This all happened too little too late as the Germans opened fire on the inner fortresses and what happened was a mass surrender. The Germans captured many Russian soldiers among which Bobir and 29 other generals. And a part of that the Germans captured 1 million artillery rounds and many other supplies and military goods as well as raw material. Yes, the Germans had hit the jackpot. The Germans were not the only ones to be astonished by the scale of their haul. The news that so much material had been stored in the fortress without the apparent knowledge of any higher commanders seemed to come as a considerable surprise to Stavka, Russian high command. Despite widespread knowledge in the army about the hoarding of stores in fortresses. The Russian defeat showed that the concept of fortresses was very obsolete by 1915. It was now time for modern war. If you want to know more about how the Germans achieved victory on the Eastern Front during World War I, you can click right here. Please consider becoming a patron because with your donations I can keep doing this and expand. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like, to comment, to share. See you later.